Okay, so we're back looking at our chapter six discussion. So you should at this point now know what a plasma membrane is, all the little parts of the membrane, the actual role, right? That, that, that key verb here being the regulatory aspect. So they don't allow anything, just anything to pass. They don't allow just anything to leave. Uh, we have to make sure we're allowing things that are going to help the cell. If there's something toxic within the cell, waste, we have to then allow that to exit the cell. So regulation happening along the border of this plasma membrane, right? the boundary that separates the outside from the inside of that cell. Now, this is the sort of the anatomy, the parts. Now we look at the sort of another phenomenon that we call diffusion. So diffusion is a, so a dynamic motion that allows movement of particles. And so particles, without us having to shake or stir or heat or any of that, the particles themselves just have this uh, movement, this Brownian movement to them, this kinetic energy that allows them to disperse. So I suspect you're familiar with this stuff. Maybe you haven't applied the vocabulary to it but if you've ever put a lump of sugar if you've put a you know something color whatever put it in liquid and you start to see it disperse well the term that we use is not dispersion but diffusion right it starts to move uh, to other parts of that little container diffusion happens with particles in water diffusion happens with uh, things in air let's say heat heat diffuses from a high source to a lower source, light from a high source to a lower source, sound, smell. So it's a phenomenon that happens to particles in different types of fluid mediums, in, in water, in air. Now, when we talk about cellular diffusion, we're looking at movement in fluid. This is through a liquid, but from one side of a membrane to the other. So that's sort of the context that we're going to address this here. So movement in fluid from one side of a membrane to the other. So uh, again, this can happen relatively quickly. So there is a, a time factor also involved, but we'll address that a little bit later. So give me, let me give you the actual vocabulary now for diffusion. So diffusion is the movement of particles from a high concentration area to a low concentration area. So concentration, how many of those little particles per unit area? Right? So from high concentration to low concentration across a biological membrane. So from high to low. So going from a high concentration here, moving upwards to a low concentration. So we consider this to be a passive type of transport. Passive because it, it uses kinetic energy, but it doesn't utilize a type of energy that we're going to cover later. We call ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So none of that form of energy is utilized. So we call that a passive process. And this is not totally correct. It does require kinetic energy, but not this potential form of ATP. And diffusion will occur as long as there is a what we call a concentration gradient as long as there's a difference in concentration so as long as there's a high and a low and we're going to continue moving from high to low until everything is balanced and there's an absence so remove that extra s so if there's an absence of a concentration gradient then uh, we have reached the state of equilibrium and that is when diffusion would theoretically stop. So in this situation, we have our little membrane. Here are these little gray lines. We have our little our IMPs, our little channels that we can move from side to side. We have these orange molecules, high concentration on the left, low concentration on the right. So Diffusion would happen, so we move the particles down their concentration gradient from left to right until we reach a state of equilibrium. We would have then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 
eight on one side, eight on the other, we've reached the state of balance. There's no high or low, no more concentration gradient. We have achieved the goal of diffusion, which is to reach equilibrium. On this bottom picture, uh, if I were to ask on a test, how many concentration gradients exist? You would analyze and say, well, there's a lot of different particles, but there's only two different types of particles. So there would be two types of concentration gradients. One for the sort of uh, maroonish colored ones from left to right, and one for these orange colored ones from right to left. So as uh, we're having diffusion from left to right, the orange ones are moving from right to left. So we have diffusion happening at the same time in opposite directions until each one of those different particles reach their own states of equilibrium. So one, two, three, orange, one, two, three, orange. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six of those maroon purple things, yeah. So this is the goal. This is what diffusion is trying to achieve. It's trying to achieve balance, same amount of particles on one side as the other. And as long as there's a gradient, uh, we would continue trying to achieve this. Sometimes it's, uh, it may be theoretically possible, other times it, it wouldn't be. If there's an odd number of particles, you see if there's an extra, uh, maybe a, in this case, a, a fourth orange one, and if it goes here, well, then there's four here and four. So it, it may or may not ever reach that theoretical equilibrial state. Now, a uh, different vocabulary term, but basically means the same thing. So we've been talking about diffusion, diffusion. What can diffuse? Uh, proteins can diffuse. Carbohydrates can diffuse. Lipids, amino acids, uh, ions, cations, anions. Uh, different uh, substances can diffuse. Well, water can also diffuse. But when we're talking about the diffusion of water, if you remember, water has these unique characteristics. It's had it, it had its own little special section in, in chapter two. Well, water has its own special vocabulary term as well. So if water is diffusing, if water is moving from high concentration to low concentration, we give it the term osmosis. So what is osmosis? It's the diffusion of water. It's when water moves from high concentration to low concentration areas. And I don't know why they gave it its own unique term, but they did. So it's one more term for you to, uh, to learn and memorize there. Now, uh, when we are looking at the idea of osmosis, we have to talk about this sort of uh, directional movement, right? So there's a whole another discussion, a whole another concept that we call tonicity. And we can have different types of tonicities. Isotonic or isotonicity, hypertonic or hypertonicity, or hypotonic, hypotonicity. Right? So if we're looking at an isotonic situation, so let me jump over here. So if we're talking about an isotonic situation, isoosmotic, isotonic, let's say that we're looking at blood cells and let's say that there's 70% water. So right, right in the number 70, right? So 70% water outside of the blood cells, 70% water inside of the blood cells. So we have 70 here, 70 here. If it's 70%, 70% water on either side, there's no high or low. So we're already at a state of equilibrium and we in essence have no net gain or loss. Everything's already in a state of balance. That's rare, right? Let's look at uh, these here, right? So if we are now in a state where we start with more water here, let's say we have 75% water inside the cell, I wish I could draw on this. I can't draw on this with this uh, computer here, but if we have 75% water, 75% water inside the cell and 70% water outside. So 70 in, I should say 75% in, 70 out. 75% in, 70 out. So there's a higher concentration of water inside of the cell. And we use the term hyper. 
Right? If a kid is hyper, they have a higher amount of energy, right? So a higher amount of water. If we have a higher amount of water in, it's going to start to diffuse outwards to try to balance that, that sort of uh, uh, that, that concentration gradient, right? So if we're losing water from the inside to the outside of the cell, we are going to call that condition hypertonic, right? So hyper, we start with more water inside, so that water is lost out of the cell, right? Hypertonic. And you can see that's not a good situation because it shrivels up our little cells like little raisins, and, and that's not going to help the cells function. Um, you would be in a state of dehydration at that point, right? So ah, you're going to feel that light headache. You're going to feel kind of not really good because our cells have lost fluid. Now, on the opposite side, we go and we drink a bunch of water, a bunch of water too fast. So now we shoot the outside liquid in the plasma to 75. And what if we're at 70 in the cell? So if we're 75 out, 70 in. 75 out, 70 in. 75 out, 70 in. What happens now? The water goes from a high concentration into the cell, causing that cell to become hypoosmotic. So hypo is the opposite of high. Hypo means low. So we start with a low amount of water inside, so water rushes into the cell and that cell starts to swell, right? And this is a risk because that cell then could inflate too much and actually burst. We could actually rupture these cells. So think of hypo. If we mispronounce hypo, you might pronounce it as hippo, like a hippopotamus. Think of a hippopotamus. Hippopotamus is, is a big round creature, right? So when water is coming in in a hypotonic state, that cell starts to swell like a, like a hippo. So hippotonic, hypotonic, we're moving water in. Hypertonic, we're moving water out. And isotonic, everything stays the same there. Right? So um, I hope these terms make sense. They're going to be part of the homework on uh, Pearson that you got to kind of navigate through. So uh, be sure and understand those vocabulary terms. Uh, I'll try to upload some little videos that, that show this in, uh, in little cells. And I'm going to upload a, it's a, it's a kind of a long video, but I think you might find it interesting. Uh, it has relevance to the El Paso Juarez area. Uh, it's uh, Dr. Alejandro Hernandez Cardenas, really well known in the scientific community for developing um, different uh, fluid combinations to to rehydrate bodies, right? So I don't want to to give you too much on on this. I'll let you watch the video. There will be some questions on the exam from the video, so definitely check it out. Again, uh, I think you might find it interesting and and see how relevant it is to our local area here. So now we take the idea of the membrane and we overlie the concept of diffusion. So we're gonna look at these two concepts as they work together. So in facilitated diffusion, if you speak Spanish, facil means easy. If you facilitate something, you help, you make it easier. So in facilitated diffusion, we're gonna have the IMPs that make it easier for diffusion to happen. It's easier to, for these yellow circles to go from a high concentration to low concentration. They're facilitated by the IMPs. Some IMPs are always open, so they always allow this. Some of them are gonna be more regulated. If you remember when we talked about diabetes, if you remember when we talked about uh, vitamin D, right? So in diabetes, we have the key insulin that opens the channel to allow glucose in. In vitamin D, we say vitamin D is the key that allows calcium in. Well, these little molecules can't pass until that key, is, uh, that key arrives. When, when insulin arrives, when vitamin D arrives, then it allows the respective molecules to move all the way through that membrane, right? So a slightly different complexity to that, a little bit more regulation, but still falls within the realm of facilitated diffusion. So um, top picture here, I hope you see this would be defined just as simple diffusion or just diffusion. Uh, 
we have our uh, we have our multiple little particles on this side, very few on this side. So just regular or simple diffusion. Diffusion is happening through that phospholipid bilayer. Again, it's going to have to be a very very small uh, molecule to be able to squeeze through there. What's more typical is then this facilitated diffusion, moving from high to low concentration through the IMP. And, and the last one, the bottom one, I hope you, you, know, you study it for a moment there and I hope you start to see something quite different. Hope you start to see, hey, that doesn't look like what we're used to, what, what we've been talking about. Right? This bottom picture no longer is defined as diffusion. Right? We're not going from a high concentration to low. We're actually going opposite. We're going from a low concentration to a high concentration. And we are utilizing AMP. It's no longer a passive process. This is an active process. We call it active transport. So my next discussion will address active transport and what we call endo or exocytosis. So, so let me stop this one here.